Hello everyone, this is Dave, aka DREBG, senior member over at informtrades.com. For those of you not familiar with Informed Trades, I welcome you to go on over and poke around. There's tons of free stuff, more than you can find almost anywhere else. Lots of great traders willing to share their ideas, and even a place to go and put up a free blog to share your own. So feel free, go over and take a look, you will not be disappointed. Today is December 8th, 2011. And we're looking at the Aussie Frank pair. This is a daily chart. And I'm going to go through exactly what it was I did to come up with the entry that I'm now in uh, on a trade short on this pair. And we'll go through the basics of setting up a blank chart and marking it up with different indicators and different uh, support and resistance areas to allow us to see where a great low risk, high probability trade entry would be and how it is that you follow through on that trade. As I said, I'm already in this trade, but I wanted to at least capture why it was that I get into it and then follow it uh, to its fruition to see where it might go. Uh, I did capture about 20 screenshots around 5.30 this afternoon uh, so that I could do this video later on and uh, hopefully it'll come out the way I want it. The way we typically start is putting the basics in. I'm a big fan of the 200 EMA. It's a great base moving average. If you don't know which one to use, that's just a perfect one on every time frame. That's personal preference, but I think uh, a lot of people think the same way, and it's just a good one to use for what I try and do. I add the 20 to that because the 20 EMA is a very good complement for how I trade, but again, you can pick pretty much anything you like. And the next thing we want to try and do is put in some support and resistance areas. That's why we start with the higher time frames. Uh, the big one that you can see is going to be right at the top, and that 95 area, I'm sorry, that 93 area is really going to be a pretty solid area that price action has respected in the past and has, as you can see here, blown through. The question is, though, what other areas of confluence can we see uh, that will help us determine what price action might be doing? Well, if we put another support line in here, you can see we can encompass a lot of that price action recently, at least back into October, uh, that you can see it's been caught in that channel. And then one last one will be at the top, at the 95.50 level. You won't be able to see exactly where this is touching because I used a weekly chart to determine where that particular resistance line was going to be. Uh, but take it on face value that uh, these are the key areas that I think will help us the most in making this trade. Now comes the most important part. I identified a channel. And this yellow channel really tells a big story. You can see at the top of the channel we've had quite a few touches from price action and a couple of touches on the bottom. But it's not just the channel that I'm concerned about, it's the confluence of the channel coupled with other areas of confluence. In this case, the 9550 resistance line is pretty significant. One thing I want to make sure I mention is that I didn't come on to this chart until this pin candle on the daily chart uh, just a few days ago, earlier last week, it would be this candle right here. This is where it bounced off the 93 level. That daily candle is really telling for me, and it says that there's plenty of buying left, and that nothing really needs to be done until it meets another level of resistance, in this case the top of the channel, coupled with that 95.50 area. Let me drill down to a four hour, and let me, let me get, give you a little more detail. Here we see that last run up and this really shows dramatically how when it reached the bottom of that channel last time we obviously saw quite a bit of buying pressure as price action went right back up to the top of that channel. Now one other thing I like to put in here just to get a feel for where it's locating, located are the weekly and monthly pivots. Weekly and monthly pivots to me they're very powerful and it's good to at least know where they are even if you don't trade off them specifically. I think it's good to know when one is coming up or if you're bumping up against something. Certainly in this case, you can see that this adds a tremendous amount of credibility to our trade at the top of the channel. Not only do we have that 95.50 level that we identified as a resistance area, and we have the top of the channel, but we also have the weekly R1 and the monthly R1. This is just a fantastic area that, to look to to actually try and see where price action might be making a move. Now the oval you see in the middle of the screen, that's that daily candle I pointed out earlier. That's where I came upon this whole chart. I didn't even see anything until I looked at it here and when I saw that big bounce off that 93 level I said okay there's some buying pressure still left here where is it going to peter out? Where is a good place that I might want to take a counter trend trade or maybe even ride it all the way back down to uh, the channel as if this was in a, in a range bound type of price action. 
So what do you do? You found a trade that will be coming, but you're not sure when it might happen. You just have an idea. Well, then just if you know there's going to be some run up because there's some good drive behind it and this there's, there's good buying power behind it, set a limit, which is what I did. I said as soon as this thing passed 9450, send me an alert. And it took a week. Um, a little less than a week to send me an alert to say, hey, price action is not far from where you were talking. Uh, make sure you take a look at this because your trade setup might be coming up pretty soon. But if you identify it and then say, when it gets to that point, just let me know, you can walk away from the chart because there's absolutely nothing left to do. Because there's nothing that price action is going to do unless some fundamental event comes in uh, until it gets to another significant level of support or resistance or confluence. So just let it ride. And then when it let me know, I can come back to it, drill down. Here's an hourly chart. And once I've found that, I'm now, tr I'm now tracking this. So somewhere uh, over here around December 5th or so when it first hit my level, I'm now tracking this. And I'm letting it bounce around the top of that channel. And when I saw this first peak here, uh, I knew that I had a pretty good shot of making a really, really great short trade. But I knew that I'm going to have to wait for some sort of retest. This is classic. This is classic for a double top, especially at a run-up like this, at an area of confluence. There's almost always a, a double top or some sort of run-up that shakes out a lot of the other traders uh, from getting in on the trade. So here again, what do you do? Well, I marked off the top, and when we pierce or almost get to this level again, uh, I know that I'm not in a bad place to short. And not right at that level, you let it commit a little bit. Let price action commit to going down. And what I did is I waited, and when price action breached this level, I said, all right, something's either going to blow through all of this resistance that we've identified, this weekly R1, monthly R1, 95.50 level, the top of the channel, or it's a great place for a reversal to happen. Indeed, we ended up with this pin bar, and what I did on this candle is I said, the minute we go below this close, uh, I want to go short. So the same thing applies here. Don't wait around and just stare at your charts. Go ahead, set a sell stop, and when it breaches that level, let the market take you into the trade. Let it take you in, not waiting around and actually triggering it. In this case, the trigger was around 95. So the thing triggers at 95, you're in, you didn't have to even look at it. It didn't even retrace on me at all. And now all you need to do is manage the trade. Let's go into it a little more detail and I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to go back up to a four hour chart. And this kind of puts things in a little more perspective. Again, right in the middle where that oval is, is where we came upon the charts after that jump off of 93. And then we let it wait and wait and wait. And around 94.50 or so, we had our alert set off a few days later that said, hey, take a look at this. Things might be happening. We had that double top. And now we're looking for a reason to get in on a high probability, low risk trade with a good stop loss. Well, one thing that you want to do when trying to determine where to put your targets is maybe to draw a fib. And when we draw fibs in here, we can see we're easily able to view the 382, the 618, the 786. Look at some of these areas of confluence. That's what this whole title is today, right? We have confluence. There's a level of support and resistance we identified right, not right next to the weekly pivot. There's the 382. Do you think something might happen there? Maybe a bounce and a continuation? I don't know, but I think it's pretty fair to say that something could happen. How about the 618? Not far off the 9150 level area of support and resistance we identified. What about the 786? It's bouncing right around the, the monthly S1, not far from the weekly S2, and the bottom of the channel. Guys, there's a lot of confluence here, and that makes price action react. So we need to put those levels in perspective. Let me take those levels off and actually put them in for targets. This is what the actual trade looks like. We're in at 95 here in pink. We have a stop loss set at 95.60. We have a first target at the 382. That's 210 pips down at the first level of support and the weekly pivot. We have another level of support and the 618 FIB, that's 360 pips down. And we have another little target down at the bottom of the channel, not far from weekly S2, right around monthly S1. And again, bumping up at the bottom of that channel. But in the meantime, we have all these different areas that we can go to to either get out or reload 
after price action takes a bounce, or just let our stop loss move down and down and down and get ourselves taken out at any point we want. Right now, this thing is up 100 pips. I can move to break even. I can move to plus 50. I can do pretty much anything I want. This is a risk-free trade at this point. So when I pull this back out again, let me show you one more thing. This is coming back out to a daily chart. We see the channel. We see our trade plan with our entry and our potential exits. We see our stop loss. And you can really get a good perspective of how this all plays out. Now that this is completed, when you take some of this stuff out of the way, you can really see that price action is king. And even without all that other stuff, you can kind of still see what the idea, what the plan is. But we needed that other information in order to come up with the trade. I'm going to take this back down to a four hour without a lot of the stuff on here and just leave this part. And this is what I'm going to try to come back to. And hopefully we see price action come down and start to meet these targets uh, and we can get out at some point. Now, hey, can this reverse on us and go to hit the stop loss? Sure it can. But I'm pretty sure that I'm going to lower this down at least to break even at some point so that that doesn't happen. But the point is we're trying to simply identify those areas that are high probability and low risk and then take them and then move our stops to zero or better as, as soon as possible without it getting stopped out too soon uh, so that we can make those profits large and those losses small. So with that, feel free to email me at drebg at yahoo.com. As usual, I'm going to post these follow-ups on my blog over at informedtrades.com and uh, have some great trading. Bye, guys.